welcome everyone again to Short Takes. If you are new to our show, uh, I get the pleasure of sitting with some really amazing people and asking them for in-depth questions toward the back half of the show. The exception uh, could be that the last question is always the same. We ask our done up real good question to all of our guests. We want to thank you very much for watching. If you know anything about surfing, you're going to know today's guest. Wow, he's a mammoth figure in, in the surfing world and, and big wave surfing particularly. And if you are uh, like me and almost knew next to nothing about surfing, but you happen to watch all of a 100-foot wave and just get sucked into that show immediately, you still know our guest. It is Mr. Garrett McNamara. Hey, man. Thank, thank you. I'm humbled and honored to be on your show. Well, yeah, hey, you, you really are uh, legendary in surfing. That's what I took from a hundred foot wave. I know you're not going to agree with me because you seem like a really humble guy, but that's true, right? People say it, but it doesn't <laughs> feel like it. <laughs> I just feel like an ordinary man. <laughs> that, well, that's because you're just a cool cat. That's why. You, you probably are just a real down to earth guy. Uh, so welcome to our show, of course. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Blaine. You know, I've been lucky to interview a few people that I really admire, but with you, I, I'm kind of in awe. I really am. I I was a little bit nervous for this one. I don't get as very nervous for these shows, but with you, it's just something about your presence, uh, especially in a hundred foot wave. And the more I read and, and research about you, it's just it's just a pleasure. Oh, I hear the family. Do I hear the the, that, the family yeah, running around? My daughter's. Uh laying on her new bed first time she's gonna sleep on her own tonight so she says we'll see how that goes hey we we're ha have, having to deal with very similar things at our house we have a four-year-old and she's oh wow congratulations boy no, or thanks. girl she's a little girl all right so what's tell her name me, andy andy wow andy. what a pretty name thanks man tell me the ages of your, of your group of children that are well, running around i have my wife is uh expecting on december 25th all right yeah Congrats. pretty amazing really excited uh we have a three-year-old mm -hmm. i have a seven-year-old three-year-old girl thea seven-year-old boy beryl mm -hmm. and then i have a 12-year-old girl a 25-year-old boy and a 27-year-old daughter from a previous marriage very big family so there's five almost six that's so great 25th. I hope it, I hope that the uh, little boy, little girl comes on the 25th. I think that'd be special. We're we're hoping we're we're planning on delivering her for season three. She's going to go into labor at the end of season two, and they're going to have to sign us for a season three to see if the baby <laughs> how the baby and I'm going to deliver it. <laughs> yes, <You're> brilliant. <laughs> oh. Yeah, we're talking about the show 100 Foot Wave, folks. If you haven't watched it, it. I swear to you, first 10 minutes of the show, five minutes of the show, you're going to be captivated. And a lot of it has to do with you, Garrett. Um, how's surfing been going for you this year? Yeah, I've been having some, some, uh, a little bit of a few speed bumps here and there. I've been feeling my legs are the strongest they've ever been and, and feeling ready more than ever. Um, the rest of my body's all right. I got to get the top half a little, a little tighter, a little more solid, but my neck, been giving me a little challenge that has been ailing me for um, I would say almost six months and it hasn't quite it goes away and then it kind of creeps back I have these amazing therapists here in in Portugal and I have an amazing therapist in Hawaii uh, Sherry Gunaway and then we got Luis over here in Portugal and and uh, I'm really confident that working with my team here in Portugal, my neck will be perfect in a couple of weeks. And there was a little teeny thing going on with lower back. I've had that for most of my life. Um, it kind of comes and goes, but I don't want it to come anymore. So I'm going to focus <laughs> on the, the neck and the lower back 100%. And then I'll be ready for action. And okay. surfing wise, I've mainly been taking my son surfing. Mm -hmm. I've been paddling around with him on the nose of my board for training, and then he jumps off and he jumps onto the wave. It's it's an amazing new new way to uh, take your your kid to the next level. He is basically it's a, you know sometimes we use the jet skis, and the guy will stand on the side of the jet ski and step off onto the wave, not get towed. You just jump in. Well, I'm, I'm doing that with my giant surfboard. I have him on the nose. I paddle for the wave, and he jumps right into the wave and goes and. And uh, that's been really the, the uh, most fun 
I've had. We just went to Kelly Slater's Wave Pool, the Surf Ranch, and um, I I had I I haven't had to rush in a long time, and putting my son on a on a nice perfect right that I know he was really concerned and not sure, but he was giving it his all, and I'm riding behind him, and so we're both kind of in the tube mm-hmm. at one point. And it almost took me out, and then I came out, and there he was, and and I got the rush. Oh, it was amazing. Oh, that's so cool. Does he get his fearlessness from seeing you uh, conquering fear? Does, does that happen, you think, with him? He is definitely not fearless. He's very calculated and very meticulous and, and um, patient and... He really observes and decides what he wants to engage in. A lot of what he wants to engage in depends on who, what friends are around. With, yeah. he's, he's, with a bunch of kids, he's going to... And if he's with that... Like, it's, it's amazing what good friends and who you surround yourself with makes such a big difference. And you talk about this in your season. I won't spoil anything. I mean, it's a documentary series. You can't spoil a lot. But you do talk about... Having fear and that uh, conquering it doesn't mean that you erase it. Uh, yeah, I don't want to say that I've conquered fear or conquer anything, but I've. Um, I like to compliment the waves and fear. Mm-hmm. I I've never really thought of it as conquering it. It's the first time that somebody shares with me that I conquered it. Mm-hmm. So I. I mean, again, I'd like to compliment the fear and, and, and choose not to be afraid. And, and you know, it, it's definitely something, I mean, scientifically, it's something we manufacture. We choose to be afraid because we are in control of our mind. We can choose to enjoy the moment or we can choose to be afraid of the moment. And when you're in the moment, doing your best in that moment and, that, and just uh, really focusing on what you're doing, and focusing on enjoying it, there is no fear. But when you start thinking about, oh, well, last time I fell and this happened, or oh, I saw this video of this guy falling over there and that happened, oh no, instead of just really staying focused and staying in the moment. Mm-hmm. When we think of the past and to think about the future, uh, things that don't exist, that's when we choose to be afraid. Mm-hmm. Very meditative. Right, and, and that's, oh, man, staying in the moment so hard for me. Uh, and I love how you have a nice grip on it, it seems. You know, it's it's not easy for me either. Uh, in the ocean, it's the, where I can find peace and and really stay in the moment. On land, day-to-day stuff, day-to-day activities, you know, just being with the kids, being with myself. Uh, my mind is always, yeah. and, I, I, and I really focus on staying where i am but you're always thinking a step ahead instead of enjoying where you are yeah it's definitely yeah. A work in progress yes uh, you have made friends through surfing in uh, some of which i feel like i've become familiar with from watching the show are you are they still um maybe not to spoil anything for season two by the way congratulations season two thank you thank you yeah. we got are you, uh, are you excited i'm pumped dude I'm right on, right on. Right on. <laughs> yeah, so it was like a week after the last episode aired, I saw the, the news and, and got really pumped. And that's part of the reason why I thought, oh, I'll reach out to him and see if he'll want to do the show, maybe talk some season two stuff or tease it. Uh, are you still in touch with Cotty? Is he still on board? Cotty is my number one right-hand man. And it's really all about who you surround yourself with and what energy you choose to share and be a part of. And Cotty is the best. He yeah. is uh, he is just so solid and focused and just a beautiful kind human. Yeah, he does seem like it. And like I was saying, uh, the show's wonderful because we I feel like I get to know some of you some of you guys, and so he seems real cool too. Uh, so we got the second season coming on uh, coming up. Is is it in production at the moment? Are are there cameras around these days? Second season, we got to get some all kinds of things flying around. Uh, the internet go cotty go go cotty go <laughs> yeah. we want cotty to get yeah. the big one <laughs> yes yes yeah oh gosh yeah i'm pulling for him so much so much me too me too he's given me my most memorable or yeah some of my most memorable waves here for sure mm-hmm. and uh just given me his all since the day i met him 
good for him. Yeah. So, and, so uh, what was the question? Sorry. Oh, oh no, I just asked. I was going to repeat. Uh, are the cameras around uh, these days? Are they? Have they already started shooting? We just were in Hawaii leaving to come here, and we had a cameraman with us the whole time. And then we went to the ranch, the surf ranch. The cameras were there. Uh, we got Pablo Garcia, he's our our our, our guy, cameraman of choice at this at the moment, and um, he was with us before it became an HBO docu series. He started filming with a few years before, and um, he went to Iceland with us. Who? That's a beautiful country. Oh, I bet. Something, yeah. it's, it's, I would say if it's a place to definitely go see if you want to see something different. And it, there's no trees. The weirdest part about it is there's no trees. And, <laughs> and we filmed all that. <laughs> cool. But there's waterfalls and the, 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 the uh, Bora Borealis or however you say it. And, yes. um, oh my goodness. It is, yeah. There's a, there's a lot going on there. Do you ever get used to those cameras kind of being right over your shoulder? When you have somebody that you're comfortable with, like it's family, mm -hmm. then the camera is just kind of like family. So you can actually really be yourself. Mm -hmm. And when they don't ask you to do something over, which most of these guys on our crew never have you repeat anything, it's all reality. Mm -hmm. um, once in a while, we'll wait a minute. Before we're about to go do something. I'll go, hey, Pablo. We're going to do this, and he'll be, oh, wait, wait, wait. Or uh, he'll see me getting ready, and he'll go, oh, Garrett, 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 wait, let me get the camera. And um, so, yeah, very comfortable. It's like you, you, what you see is what you get uh, in the docuseries is just so raw and real because the camera is family, the cameraman, and it just comes with a camera. That's great. Before we jump into our, the back half of our show, um, I'd like to guide viewers to your site. They can book sessions with you for your workshops, Am, right? Am I correct? You know, we have some experiences. Uh, we tailor make days to accommodate people's needs, and uh, the proceeds go to our foundation. And it's uh, you know to create the foundation is to create meaningful nature experiences for mm -hmm. for for children mainly uh, underprivileged children, uh, preferably, but you know for everybody, children. Uh, adults and it's just with the, the kids it's like how we, we tell them hey we got to protect the ocean we got to mm -hmm. be conscious we got to be sustainable but how are we going to even expect them to care if they don't get in nature they don't feel it touch it be part of it and fall in love with it so our foundation is based around giving children and everybody meaningful nature experiences so they can fall in love with nature and nurture and protect the environment it it was heartwarming for me when i saw on your site there are three areas at the bottom that people can click on and look about these booking sessions and one of them was the ones with with kids with a focus on um overcoming fears and helping with the environment and and connecting them and i thought that was so special man that's good for you the, the what, one thing we really like to share is uh, goal setting as well. You know, figuring out what you love to do and figuring out how to do that for the rest of your life. And, uh, and you know, it can always change. You can be focused and think this is something you love. You start doing it and always say, hmm, this isn't what I really love. And you can always change your mind, but it's, it's good to start at a young age. I mean, I didn't start till I was 35, writing my goals. So it's never too early and it's never too late. <laughs> it really isn't too late. I, I mean, I just, we've been working on the Alabama Take just only for a few years. And we get to sit with great, great folks like you already. Um, right on. Uh, it, so with with the website, I'll put that in the show notes. So all of you click on uh, Garrett's site. You can find Garrett on Instagram as well, where he kind of, You've been posting about some of the ongoings of uh, Portugal now that you guys are over there. The experiences that we are invite people to be a part of are pretty high end, very exclusive, very, I don't do very many of them. And it's for anybody who wants to step into my shoes. Hmm. Uh, they can, I can take them to ride big waves. I can take them out on the jet ski and just sit there in the channel and watch the big waves. Or we can just go and have some lunch or what, whatever it is, whatever that person wants to do, we cater to their needs. I mean, preferably we get in the water and we have some fun. Mm -hmm. 
mm -hmm. really make it an experience. Mm -hmm. But, you know, there's a lot of curious people out there who have, you know, unlimited amount of money that they want to do some good with it. So we use this as a way to do good. Yeah, that that's a real special thing that you do for uh, for the kids and connecting them to nature. I try to do that as much with my little girl, or at least reminder of, um, especially with our pets and things. <laughs> there, they, there they are. Um, let's get into our four questions, and I ask you some of those. Okay. Okay. Our first question is: you know, you've done a lot with your life, probably enough at this point to fill two or three lifetimes. Maybe. So what's a life-altering event that's happened to you that you feel like would help everyone if they could experience? Meeting your twin flame or your soulmate. Meeting oh, my yeah. wife, Nicole, was definitely the pinnacle. That's when my life changed and took an amazing turn. And pretty much everything that I wanted to accomplish and had focused and thought about for the last 40 years, actually about 45 years, I was about 42 or 43 years. And uh, everything that I wanted to do happened. From the day I met Nicole, she just was my better, my, my other half, my, be my better half. And she um, is just so thoughtful, so kind, so caring. And she just thinks about everybody and everything, but more big picture, more about the world and, and what we're doing to the world and how we can do better. And and we just focused on living that way and, and doing as much good as we could through what we do and how we do it. And when you have that recipe, you know, doing what you love and giving back, you cannot fail. And she just really shared with me how how to be a contributor, not a consumer. Mm. And I and I'm and we don't have it all figured out. We're still consuming. We're still working sure. on being hundred percent sustainable and 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 living in our little community and, and you know, farming and share bartering and, and you know, but it right now we're in Portugal and we're we eat at this restaurant and there's my mo Portuguese mother and, and uh, her husband grows most of the produce. And it's you know it's really amazing. It's it's just just step in the right direction. And they're the I think they're the only only restaurant in Nazare that has glass bottles at the dinner table. Everybody else has plastic. So, mm. and that's something that we shared with them, and they in, they quickly uh, changed their ways. And the the Papa always grew the food, so that was always yeah. there. Huh. That's cool. You and Nicole do seem to have a special bond, just from what I can tell from the show. How did you meet? We were in Puerto Rico separately. I was there for a, a event called Surfer Healing. We take autistic children surfing, yeah. and uh, she was there for a paddleboard race. And we uh, were at this charity dinner the night before her race, the night before my event, and we met. And it was love at first sight. Oh, cool! Uh, is she still in uh, environmental education? Yeah, she has her master's, and and uh, we she had during uh, last year's shutdown, we opened mm -hmm. a school on the property, and so she taught um, thirteen kids from I think fifth grade to ninth grade in one class. Yeah, yeah, she's That's cool. she's a superwoman. Yes, she is. I don't know if is. anybody could actually do that. Uh, I actually teach high school English, so. She good is middle school, middle yeah, school. Yeah, good for her. Middle All school. subjects. Yeah, good. I, I can't do that. <laughs> good for her. Uh, well, she. I think she learned a bit. <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Daily, I'm sure. I'm sure, daily. So uh, there's a motif. This is our question, too. This are, there's a motif of the show, 100-Foot Wave. It's about, um, you know, fear and and I think that makes the show intriguing and universal, uh, even if for just in case anyone doesn't like surfing or doesn't know anything about it, still universal. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to the fear that. part, okay. the fear part. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 So, so you said you were a teacher when you said ninth grade. I, wow. I did teach ninth grade for years and years and years. I did. Okay. Uh, I teach 11th okay. grade now. OK. OK. Yeah. How do you 11th a little better than ninth, huh? Eleventh a little better than ninth. They're a little bit I, more relatable. I heard seventh and eighth are like 
send them to an island. They just need to. So, a, so, <laughs> that's right. So they can socialize and then bring them back at ninth or tenth grade. Yes, yeah, that's a hundred percent accurate. It is. Um, but we were talking about a fear earlier, uh, and I'll take that into another realm. Who's someone that you find scary? That's easy. My wife again. <laughs> You be you better be careful. If I if I if I make her mad and she give me that look, it's like oh my god, I feel like. <laughs> but okay, who would I think is scary? You know, I have a physical therapist in Hawaii, and she's pretty much, for lack of a better word, a witch, and she's psychic and and she's tough, and I would never want to be on the wrong the wrong side of her. She would definitely be super scary, and and she can. She's she's intense and um, but she is the best physical therapist I've ever worked with. That's a that's a good answer. Sounds intimidating. So you've had a huge role in shaping the evolution of surfing, uh, especially with some of that protective gear. The show doesn't do a deep dive on it, but it does, it's mentioned in the first season. So let's take that into the abstract a little. What's a step in human evolution? Human evolution. Did you, you like, like the tech? Did you like the technical part of that? Was that should we dive deeper into some of that this Let's year? Do, or you think? Yeah, yeah. Do you have a minute? Let's do that. Well, no, I mean on the show. Oh yeah, I do. I was curious. Uh, I can dive deeper in the, in the stuff now if you want. Yeah, yeah. Well, maybe just a little. What? what yeah, yeah. What is that? Uh, is that and you pull a string? What's what's happening there? Okay, so. We put flotation into our wetsuit. It's glued in, so our wetsuits are very buoyant. So mm-hmm. we're going to come up. If we get knocked out, we will uh-huh. come up, and somebody can find us, our partners, hopefully. Uh-huh. Uh, and under the flotation wetsuit is an inflation vest, and it's very similar to an airbag. And it's under here and in your back, and it goes around your shoulders and o- yeah. over your and you pull it and go uh-huh. so you're instantly just air you're full of air and then you're as soon as the white water goes by you're coming to the surface fast right and once you come up if there's another wave coming you have four inflation canisters so then there's a deflate valve so you pull the deflate and now you can swim back under and then if you're under forever and you can't get up then you pull again and you come up and then if you come up and there's a big giant wave but it's not broken and you want to try and swim through it and you have enough time then you deflate again and you swim through make it out the back and then you have two more poles you got four poles so oh, it's okay. pretty it's it's the most advanced and and the greatest invention in big wave surfing to date uh the inflation vests are yeah we're utilizing technology to be safe and mm-hmm. have more fun. So when you when you're underwater getting pounded, most of us can handle most of the poundings. Mm-hmm. Here in Nazare, not really. We, we would we'd be knocking out here in Nazare without the inflation, probably. Wow. But we can handle most of them. Without it, you get you use so much energy when you're down there so deep and holding your breath for so long and trying to come up. Without the inflation, you expel so much energy. So when you utilize it, you get to surf more because you don't mm-hmm. use all your energy and you can surf all day long. That's great. And, how, and you came up with this, right? The inflation one, I actually was the first to make it, but it was uh, a one-off that I did with this, this girl, Lauren. It was her, she was uh, her senior year in Harvard, and she... Uh, uh, wanted to do a, something with me for surfing and she said let's do a project for her her thesis for her senior grade and we built an inflation suit and it worked but it was just it never went anywhere i didn't i couldn't get anybody to to oh. join me and and, and build it and then a, a few different entities shane Doran with billabong and then patagonia and then there's blue soup uh, and quicksilver they all have pretty good vests the, the one i prefer is the patagonia and then putting in flotation in my wetsuit, uh-huh. I did it way before everybody. They all thought I was nuts. Like, what's Scarrett really? doing? They all thought, uh-huh. I, and then I would take off on anything and not be afraid. I get pounded, no problem, because I have my flotation. So uh-huh. I was coming up, but they all thought I was nuts. And uh, then, and they thought, oh, what is it? They all kind of like 
most I know behind my back they probably were like, nah, what's he doing? Like kind of you know, <laughs> like you know, thumbs yeah, down. Yeah. And uh, now everybody has it. <laughs> there you go. And we don't lose anybody. That's the thing. Yeah. Everybody survives now. I love it. Oh man, that's that's really cool that you that you did some of that. And I hope uh, I hope the young lady got a got a good grade on her. On her she got an thing. A. She got an A. I've been trying. I was trying to get her to email me the files and all the emails that we exchanged for the show, mm-hmm. and she couldn't dig it up, and I couldn't dig it up. It's on one of my old emails from way back in the day that doesn't uh-huh. exist anymore. Yeah, mm, I was gonna say if you could find it, you got the second season now. You could sh- you could reveal some of that. I do hope you uh, get into that a little bit more. Um, they spend just a few minutes in one of the next to last episodes uh, about it. So yeah, yeah, it's fascinating stuff. There's also the surfboards. The surfboards you would think they're light. They're twenty pounds, and they have, they have a bunch of ten pounds of lead weight in them in the middle. Uh-huh. And these super sharp, small fins, and they're really, they're only six feet tall, and they're two inches thick, and they're just like blades. Really? Yeah. I don't know that I would have guessed that that I really want to dive into that in this next season. Yeah. Mercedes actually built the ultimate board for Nazare for me in 2013. That mm-hmm. definitely should, should, uh, we can always do some flashbacks. I hope they do. You know, Chris Smith is a genius, the editor. Mm-hmm. And Joe Lewis, our producer, is second to none. And uh, they they all, you know, they really cut things to make me look good. I, I, you know, I mean, people are pumping me up and this and that, but I, I'm half of the guy that they put in that movie. They they really made me look better than I am. I don't know, man. <laughs> They'd have to have something. They, you still have to produce the results, and it's, it's in there. Um, so, yeah, I was going to ask, what's a step in human evolution that you hope you get to see or maybe that your uh, children get to see? There's so many. I would mm. say, first and foremost, for the ocean is... Yeah single-use plastic but you know not all you know there's so many amazing medical devices and there's so many uh different applications for plastic but single-use plastic bottles single-use plastic bags single-use plastic bags in boxes of cereal and yeah i mean you i mean if you go into any grow if you if if you do some research and find out what actual healthy food is and how healthy food is fresh organic that's the only thing that's actually healthy Mm -hmm. and you go into a supermarket these days or a convenience store you can do a 360 turn Mm -hmm. there will not be one healthy product in the whole and 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 99 percent are in plastic Mm-hmm. It's so crazy. Yeah, it's everywhere. That single-use plastics. I can't hardly think of anything food-related that doesn't involve it a little. Yeah, uh, they do have. Um, there's corn. They're making plastic out of corn, and they're making plastic mm. out of hemp. Now, hemp you can actually make oil out of. So, hemp is a pliable plastic that's biodegradable. Uh, the hemp plant produces more oxygen than any other. No, there's only one other plant in the world that produces the same amount of oxygen as hemp. So that is a it's a perfect solution. But when they made the laws of back in the way back in the day, the oil companies made the laws they outlawed hemp. Yeah, because it was a competing uh, material. Yeah, well, it's time to get rid of those then. Well, there's solutions. There are solutions. Yeah, and you know there there's. Uh, the technology and the internet and the computers, the supercomputers, they have the solutions. They have the answers. They know where we're going and they know how long we have. And they know exactly what we can do to reverse it and how to do it. But it's the capitalism that just oh. gets in the way. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, we try to touch on how capitalism just has a firm grip on on the the the, the, the capitalism is hand in hand with us, so many problems so yeah I, we that's something we touch on at our side uh from time when to time. is enough isn't uh, when is enough enough exactly exactly <laughs> oh, well if you get, better not get a, me started on that uh let's okay get to, okay let's, let's go positive it, let's keep it positive let's keep it positive we'll end <laughs> there, with our last there is, question there is hope there is hope those computers have the answer 
answers. It's the right. Suit, they have those, those supercomputers have the answers. We just have to follow it. I don't know if they're going to let us have them, though. Hmm. <laughs> don't say that, man. That's, that's scary. Um, yeah, we, we've reached our last question. It's our fourth question. Everybody is this question. It's uh, what, what are you – we say it's done up real good. All right, and so what that means is, what are you digging? What's making you happy? What's uh, what's turning you on lately? What's done up real can, good for you? Can you dig it? Can you dig you, it? You dig? Yeah, I love it. <laughs> uh, done up well. I have to say that the one thing that been done up, I think, better than all of the productions and experiences I've had in the business world. The number one best done up thing I've ever seen is the hundred foot wave. Yeah, I, yeah, I agree. I am I am the hardest sell on any of the productions, any things that I've been involved with. I'm always just like, ah, scary, ooh, ah, wow. And I don't really have any complaints. You know, it is just so well done. Chris Smith is a genius, as I said. Joe Lewis. Yep. Then this guy Sam, who tracks down all the footage. And then HBO put in like their whole team to edit. They had like four or five editors. They had Michael Jordan's Last Dance editor on it. Oh, they yeah, had yeah. Philip Glass. I mean, they pull out yes. all the stops. And, and I was still, to be honest, I was worried. Like, yeah. Chris Smith, Tiger King, what's he going to make me the Tiger King of the surfing world? <laughs> Not at all. Not at all. Quite the, quite the opposite, in fact. You, um, that's going to that's gonna end up in our, in our top three easily shows of the year. Top three shows easily, Whoa. if not the top spot. Um, wow. is, uh, so is uh, anything we forgot that you'd want our viewers to know? Um, we got your website. We're going to put that in the notes. People can uh, go there. I'm pretty good on on messages on Instagram. So oh, if, people yeah. have, if people have questions, feel free. And That's... you can also go to the website and send questions. I, I love you know hearing what people have to say and and uh, getting inspired and and sharing. Hopefully inspiring. So any questions, any any uh, big waves out there? People want me to go check out in Alabama or somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot here, sadly, but you can always come for a visit. Oh, all right, all right. All right, man. So the hey. Instagram, the Instagram's McNamara underscore S. Mm -hmm. And then we do have a book called Hound of the Sea. It's on, uh, what can you get it? Uh, Amazon, I think. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Harper Collins produced the book for us. It's amazing. Um, it was something that I've, you know, was in pretty down and out with my shoulder when we finished it up so and i oh. didn't have a lot of uh, energy so i didn't promote it at all uh -huh. and but the the people that the few people that found it um love it actually it's doing really well they've been they're doing it in french right now it's in portuguese it's in english um and we're getting like you know, you get you get your uh, commission up front, and you don't get any money until the book really makes money. They've been sending mm -hmm. us some checks, so it's it's got to be doing pretty well. And people, good friends of mine, mm -hmm. one guy, one guy in particular, he uh, not much of a book reader. I, I either I gave him a copy, or somehow he got his hands on a copy. And he said he sat sat on his toilet for for a couple of days and read the whole thing, <laughs> not not straight, you know what? It, and his wife, his wife is like, "What the hell are you doing in there?" Mm -hmm. And he's like, mm -hmm. "I'm reading, I'm reading." He, she said, "What are you reading?" This Garrett's book. He's like, "What the hell? You never read it. You're reading that?" And he's like, "He's so good. I got to read the whole thing." <laughs> got, I'll get a copy. That sounds good. Um, so yeah, our viewers get get a copy of Garrett's book, Hound of the Sea. Hound of the Sea. That's what McNamara actually means in Irish Gaelic. Really? Yeah, my father didn't tell us that until I was about 10 years ago. He finally shared that with us. Oh, man. Talk about a full circle. Garrett, it has been just a pleasure, man. I know it's night over there in Portugal, and you're so kind. Time is important, and you spend a little with us. That's, that means a lot to me, man. And uh, uh, love to you, your family, Nicole, and uh, say hello to Cotty for us. I will, and her brother CJ is coming back as well. And, All right. And uh, Nicole's always up for a podcast, so whenever you want to get her on, please reach out. Yes. She's actually a much more well-spoken than I and 
has she's just a well of knowledge and and information yeah. and stories and and she can actually articulate the story so you might have fun with her well get her on <laughs> oh man that's that's so awesome we gotta you see if we can get her though it's tough to get her we'll, we'll see oh, what yeah? we can do i get... might give her a nudge you send her an email i'll give her a nudge okay okay <laughs> hey, I saw you looking up at her, Garrett. Thanks she's again. Gone. She's gone. <laughs> hey, we tell her she's welcome. She's welcome on the show. All yeah. of you guys are welcome. She's shy. Uh, she's shy. Uh, thanks again, and um, we'll get some folks to your site. Get that book in their hands, and uh, take care of yourself. Get those eleven-year-olds. Tell them get right down your goals. Figure out what you love. Write it down. Make a map. Get your blueprint. Mm-hmm. And you, you'll be able to see all your students like do what they love. Hope so. All right, man. Take care of yourself, and we will see you in Season 2. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Found his finger by my mama's grave